Ladies and gentlemen, in the ShredGamingTech.com video, we're going to be talking about Project Shield, which is NVIDIA's new handheld Android gaming system, which is going to be using the Tegra 4 processor. Now, before we get into the actual handheld itself and speculations and thoughts on that, we're going to talk about the specifications behind the Tegra 4 and just what it's going to mean for your gaming experience. So for those of you who are not that familiar with the whole process, Tegra 3 um, is about six times slower than Tegra 4. So in other words, it's quite the jump up. And we're talking about a quad-core uh, CPU here. Indeed, it's actually the first quad-core ARM Cortex-A15, which apparently is going to boost web browsing speed by just over two and a half times and increase application performance, better onboard LTE support, blah, blah, blah. Now, perhaps most impressively out of all of this, it's going to be using 45% less power than the Tiagra 3, so it's quite a lot less indeed. The Tiagra 4 supports up to 14 hours of HD video playback on your phone. At the time of my recording the video, we've not got an actual clock speed of what the Tegra 4's processor is going to be, but we do know it's going to have 72 GPU cores. Uh, that's basically the graphics processing units. Uh, what we're assuming this is going to be is for CUDA, which, by the way, also means it's going to be really cool for those of us who do, say, uh, rendering on the move or, for example, mobile versions of Photoshop, that type of thing, which are all, of course, CUDA supported and also 3D stuff. So that's pretty awesome. It's also on a far, far smaller manufacturing process, which, of course, is one of the reasons that they're able to lower the power requirements for it. And it's only going to be 28 nm. This is quite a big difference from Tegra got a freeze 40 nm. One small note, however, is that basically NVIDIA could not manage to integrate the LTE onto its chip. So that basically means that it lowered the battery life. So basically you're going to have to have the company add in a separate or additional, shall I say, celluloid, cellular modem. So what about this whole um, Android gaming system? What do we actually know about that? Well, quite a bit, actually. The first thing I'm going to go into is the fact that it actually has a 5-inch, that's right, 5-inch, which is pretty decent, 720p HD display, which is not too bad at all. Now, the screen itself is flip-up, which is pretty awesome, and more to the point, it's got its own integrated sound system, and... For those of you who are familiar with, well, pretty much any controller of recent memory, it's very similar to those. And it also supports an HDMI out, as well as a micro USB for accessories and docks, so who knows, we might even be able to see if a, for example, a keyboard connected to it. And even a micro SD port for expandable storage. It's also worth noting that NVIDIA are saying it's a pure Android. So that gives you pretty much infinite access to all of the stuff that you'd expect from Android Marketplace and, of course, Google Play Store. Now, you can imagine right away the modability of this. Uh, we won't really get into that on this particular video, but I imagine there's going to be quite a few modified Tiger 4-based uh, handsets going about, and I would not be surprised if Project Shield is hacked to buggery, is basically what it comes down to. However, that's not the end of it. The video have basically demonstrated the system being outputted to um, a 4K display with real-time games. It's also able to stream games from your own home PC. So let's say, for example, that you have Batman Arkham City, for example, on your home system. Well, you'll just be able to play that game quite easily anywhere in your home using the Wi-Fi. This is important. Why Wi-Fi only? Well, this goes to another video I actually produced recently. The problem with cloud-based gaming, and obviously in the video are smart enough to know this, that when you're doing it over the internet, you've just got that delay. And right now, people's connections are not fast enough. Whereas on the other hand, well, most homes have at least 54 Mbps when it comes to their Wi-Fi connections. There is one small caveat about this, however. You must have a NVIDIA graphics card. Now, I'm not exactly sure um, if they're going to be able to ever rectify this. There could be third-party mods released for Radeon-based cards, but it's most likely going to be exclusive, similar to physics. Now, there has not been a price point announced for this system yet. 
So we're not exactly sure what they're going to charge. I can guess it's probably going to be fairly reasonably priced in comparison to the competitors, but who the heck knows. Um, what we do know, obviously, is the fact that because it's got access to the Android Marketplace, it should be able to run fairly awesomely in its own standalone. Now, I did admit, go on record a couple of times, by the way, that I believe that handheld gaming devices like the 3DS and so on have a limited shelf life. Um, and indeed, this could be the way forward. I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo themselves are, well, kicking themselves quite, quite rightly so, and indeed Sony. We know that, for example, that the 3DS uh, XL and the PlayStation Vita did not sell quite as well as they expected to. This is due to a number of reasons. Predominantly, uh, most people have cell phones which are more than capable of playing games now. And the same thing for iPads. I personally don't own an iPad, but I have used one and I can tell you they're pretty awesome for games. Same thing, of course, goes for pretty much any tablet. Apparently, from what I understand, at least in these early reports, it seems that the battery life is actually going to be pretty awesome with this system. We're going to be looking at about 5 to 10 hours of actual playtime, or around an entire day, that's 24 hours of HD video playback on the 5 inch screen. And once again, as I've already mentioned, we're going to have audio and everything else built in, or you can output this. So it's absolutely perfect for pretty much anything. Now obviously the fact that you do have to actually have a local connection, um, in other words, a local Wi-Fi connection will mean that you can't, for example, go to, let's say, uh, traveling on a train while, uh, let's say, your home system streaming it. We don't have the, that level of speed yet, maybe when connections get faster. But for now, do know that you could be anywhere in your home and chilling and playing your games, and more to the point, you're going to have access to excellent Android games. I don't think this is exactly going to be... The revolution i think this is a kind of a stepping stone i think we're getting closer and closer and closer however to where they actually really want us to be um technology wise so this is pretty awesome i'm fairly impressed with the device it isn't anything that i kind of expected for them not to produce in other words it's not anything astounding to me technology wise it's you know been on the cards for a while in my opinion but it is pretty awesome and Hopefully we're going to be seeing something very awesome, uh, or even more awesome, should I say, in a not too distant future. Another side note is... Anyway guys, I think that's just about it for now. Um, there's probably going to be a lot more information on this in the not too distant future when it's released. Obviously at the moment it's still very early spec uh, speculation, we don't even know the actual CPU's are running speeds for example. But anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video, I will see you around soon. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.